Okay. So as I promised, here's the attack matrix from MITRE, with group from MIT. So the point of this thing is to try to um, organize all the steps of an attack and therefore all the possible defense measures you can take. And in the early days, we had the um, certified ethical hacker had these like six steps to attack a network. And then there was the Lockheed Martin kill chain, the steps that people do to break into a network. And this is just the next evolution of the same thing. So there's initial access where they somehow gain some ability to execute code on your machine. Uh, to get something on the machine, then some way to execute code on the machine, then some way to achieve persistence so that when machines restart, the attacker still has control over them, then privilege escalation from a limited user to administrator to domain administrator or whatever else you have, then some way to avoid defense tools like antivirus, some way to steal credentials to get other privileges on the network, some way to dump out information from uh, machines, loot the machines for repositories of data, lateral movement to take over other machines in the network, then other ways to collect data, command and control centers to issue commands from a central server and use the machines as bots, then a way to um, sneak loot from the network, exfiltrating secrets out, and then general impact of what your goal of your campaign is. So that's their category. And each one of these has a technique. So here's drive-by compromise for initial access. And if you click on that, this is, uh, they describe what a drive-by compromise is, explain how it works, where someone just opens a website and it puts some kind of malware on their machine. And then it gives you the APT groups that did this. They have collected the tools techniques and procedures of advanced resistant threat actors and listed them all saying which groups did this. And then they have recommended mitigations you can use to stop this and ways to detect it and references. So, I mean, this is really good. The whole point of this is a really good way to guide uh, pen testers, attackers, defenders, people who want to do threat actor analysis. You can learn what kind of attacks are out there and who's doing it and then make plans of what your attacks you are worried about and how to stop them, it's really extremely useful and constantly being updated. So um, you just have to learn how to read this thing and make, I say, well, I want to make sure all my students know what all these things are, like AppCert DILs. If you don't know about AppCert DILs, you should. They're here in the registry and these are, um, they call these, it's like process injection. It's a way to achieve privilege escalation by causing a DIL to be run. These DILs are loaded when other programs load. So you can cause extra code to be added to a program that's legitimately on the machine and run it. So you should know all these techniques and what they mean. So I just made a couple of sort of online quizzes you can use just to practice using that web page and finding things on there. So here, what tactic uses the technique nervous network service scanning. So I can go here and right there I see network service scanning. So discovery does it. And is discovery one of the options? And it is. So that one's correct. So you just see if you can go through the, uh, you just learn how to find these things and recognize the terms. And there's just a little series of these things. Here you got the techniques for tactics one to three in more detail. So what technique uses the new Windows scripting environment? Well, that would be PowerShell. So I'm going to look in the first three columns for who uses PowerShell. And I think it's down here someplace. Um, probably execution. Right, here's PowerShell. So there is a, a um, execution technique named PowerShell. So that would be this. All right. So that's just making sure you know all the terms. That's what all these first ones do. And the next one is, and here you learn through that you know the groups. You get to answer questions about attack groups. Which group is Cozy Bear, which is one of the Russian groups. So you can go to the MITRE attack and you can go up here to groups and learn about the groups and here they are. So you can look for Cozy Bear here and I'm not finding it, but I can look for it with the search engine. 
there's Koji Bear. So Koji Bear is APT 29. And so you got some, so you can learn the simple stuff that way. This is just learning all the terms and learning how to use this matrix to find things. And then there's the attack navigator, which is a lot of fun. This is an online tool. And again, I saw it about a year ago and I just freaked out. It looked impossible, but now there's an online tutorial that totally shows you how to use it. So here you have all the tools, techniques, and procedures in an interactive spreadsheet. And you have, can have a layer here. You can do things here. There's about 12 buttons up here, and there's only two of them that I ever use. Um, this one here, I think, is the add one. Yeah. So I'm going to add APT1. Select it. This will select all the things that APT1 does. And then, once you've done that, you can um, give it a score. So I'm going to give it a score of one. And now all the things that APT1 do are now um, colored in red. Now I'm going to rename this layer APT1. Now I can add another layer, which is going to be a new empty layer. And I'm going to add um, that to say APT12, select. OK, that highlights the th that puts rectangles around the things for APT12. And now I'm going to score that as a 2. So it turns those red. And I'm going to call this APT12. And now I can compare these two APT groups with a calculated uh, sheet. So I go here. I'm going to create a layer from other layers. And it, this one is called A. This one is called B. And you just write a mathematical expression here, like A plus B. Now create, and now it has added the scores. So the red ones have a score of one, that's APT1 only. The green ones have a score of two, and if there is anything done by both of them, it would have a score of three and a different color, and looks like there aren't any in that category. So this is how you can efficiently compare groups and see what they do, what's in common, and what's different. So you can now answer questions like this. Um, you can answer a question like, what initial access technique was used by NotPetya? That's just using one group. So let me just do that one to be clear here. I'm going to delete these old ones. And let's go to NotPetya. Let's just delete them all. New tab, create new layer. OK, so I go here, and I find NotPetya, which I think is software, not a group. So. There we are. I saw it go by. There we are. Not Petya. Select. OK. And so they've highlighted them there. I can give them a color. I'll give it a score of one just so I can see it more easily. All right. Here's all the things Not Petya does. And the question to answer is, what initial technique was used by Not Petya? So I go to Initial Access. It used Supply Chain and Valid Accounts. So supply chain is an option, valid accounts isn't, so it's this one. Now here, I want to say what initial access technique is used by both Cobalt and Dark Hydras. So let's go back to here, get rid of that. And it was Cobalt and Dark Hydras. So I add Cobalt, which is a group. So there's Cobalt. And I give them a score of one. OK, and I'll call this Cobalt. And then I go here. And it was Dark Hydrus, Dark Hydrus, OK? I create a new empty layer. I add Dark Hydrus, which is also a group. There it is. I select them. Then I give that a score of, say, two. And this is now Dark Hydrus. All right. And now I want to compare the two. So I make a new layer of A plus B again and create it. And now I have all the combinations. This one is cobalt only. The green is both of them. And yellow is Dark Hydrus only. So now I can answer any question comparing these groups. 
And the question here is what initial access technique is used by both? And so that would be this one, the green one, with a score of three, because it has both one and two. So spearfishing was used by both groups, and there it is. So again, when you get 10 correct, a flag appears, you can put in the scoring engine, and all this just lets you understand how to use the MITRE ATT&CK matrix and how to use ATT&CK Navigator here. And uh, this is a big step forward if you want to get good at things like attribution. And I guess I'll just put this along with it, um, Caldera. Caldera is the software tool you can install that will perform these attacks. So you install it on a Linux machine. Um, it's perfectly fine. You just use the right commands and let through the right ports in the firewall, and you will now have Caldera running. It gives you a nice web page. There's a training event where you can practice operating Caldera. It's like GUR. It has a local agent to control the machines, and it's going to run simulated attacks on those machines to test your defenses. So you can uh, learn how to create a remote agent. It, the remote agent, for example, for Windows machine is just a PowerShell script. You just copy and run that script on the agent, and now you will appear as a uh, local machine um, under the control of the Caldera server. So there's a training tool here where you get check marks, but I was only able to do the first five. I couldn't figure out how to do the later ones. So that training tool didn't help me that much, but it was good for the just starting out. And then I just uh, made a, sheet, a flag here where you practice using it. You've got a Caldera server and you have a Windows client. So you'll find you have an agent that's alive controlling a Windows machine. And now you can go put some loot on the target system a uh, history and uh, put on an antivirus tool and you put on a notepad file with some data in it just so you can see if you can steal that stuff. Now you can make an adversary. So there's a whole series of APT type adversaries. So it will do a screen capture, copy the clipboard, get the bookmarks, find the antivirus and so on. This will go through a whole series of attack operations. You create a operation and then you run it. It will now pr perform that attack. You'll see progress bar go by and it'll show you what worked. It tried to find the Wi-Fi, but that failed because my machine didn't have any Wi-Fi. So these Wi-Fi things didn't work, but it was able to discover antivirus, do a screen capture, copy the clipboard. Then it tries to create a staging directory and exfiltrate the data. And so it will rate you by which of these activity succeeded and which failed. And the point is you can then test your defenses. So you get a screenshot. The screenshot is not sent to the server. It's just put on the desktop of the client because this is not a real attack tool intended to be used for real attacks. It's just intended to test your defenses. So if I was able to put a screenshot somewhere, it regards that as a failure. And um, on you go. It was able, in fact, to steal data from the clipboard, though. I was able to get the top secret information. So it does succeed in stealing some data. And so that's, a, um, that's another uh, alternative to something like GUR. This is specifically designed to match the attack matrix to go through the real attack steps for advanced resistance and threat actors. And then you can turn on some defenses and go through those steps again and see if your defenses are working. So all this is an attempt to organize. Uh, this process of protecting ourselves from APTs and turning on good defenses and be able to have some measure of our success and some measure of our improvement as you improve your defenses. So it's trying to turn security into a science. And this is definitely the new hotness. We should all be learning this stuff, knowing how it works and being in the game as this stuff is improved and replaced by more and more uh, sophisticated and effective defenses. All right, put up this video.